I want to talk to you guys for a second about fighting yesterday's battles and insecurity. So the first thing to understand is that, like, you know, be careful about what makes you feel good and what makes you feel bad. Because a lot of times we have hunger. And that hunger is to, like, right a wrong from, like, yesterday or a decade ago or two decades ago. Right? It's an insecurity that's born, like, when we're young. And then what happens is we carry that insecurity. We, like, feel a particular way about ourselves, right? Like, we're not attractive or we're not worth loving or we're stupid or we're smart, which can also be an insecurity. And then what happens is, like, we want to... Sh we we I do everything we can to reassure ourselves that that insecurity is false, right? So if you're, if you think you're smart and you're insecure about your intelligence, then you won't ever really apply yourself because you'd rather half ass it and get a C than do your best and get a B. And so you look for reassurance around that insecurity. If you're in a relationship, for example, like you need to hear other people tell you, Hey, like, do you really love me? And so you seek reassurance and there's that hunger, right? Like you want other people to tell you that, yeah, you're worth being with, you're awesome, you're beautiful, or you run around on the internet and you, you know, talk about how smart you are in theoretical physics because you want other people to appreciate your intelligence. You need that appreciation. And so the tricky thing about insecurity is it's like a hunger inside you that needs to be fed from the outside. And so you go outside and you look for, I'm going to get it fed over here. I'm going to get it fed over here. I'm going to flex on these guys. I'm going to stomp these noobs. I'm going to show everyone. And the crazy thing is that the things that you need to show everyone are the things that you don't believe about yourself. You're looking to solve that insecurity on the outside. You're looking for their responses to show you that the insecurity is false because you believe it yourself, but you're afraid that it's true. So you go to other people. And the problem is that kind of hunger can be satisfied for a time by reassurance, but it's like a band-aid because the insecurity comes from within. And so anything that you do from the outside is not going to fix it. And that's what we see, right? Like the person who needs to be reassured in a relationship needs to be reassured the next day. And the person who thinks they're really smart and flexes on these noobs has to flex on some other noobs tomorrow. Because the internet is not like those people don't flex on like egotistical people on the internet aren't egotistical one day and then they disappear. No, they live on the internet for their entire lives and they're, they're flexing on everyone as much as they can. Because they believe something about themselves that they don't want to be true. So the crazy thing is like, how do you deal with that? And the first thing is stop feeding it from the outside, because here's the crazy thing. When you have an insecurity and you feed it from the outside, what happens to things that you feed? They grow. And so each time you seek that reassurance, you're going to need more of it the next time. And you're going to need more of it the next time. And the more you rely on outside things, the more, I know this sounds crazy, the more you become dependent on those outside things. You need those outside signals. That's what you rely on to feel good about yourself. And then you wind up with these kinds of situations where you feel wonderful one day and you feel like crap another day. And what's the difference? It's how you're treated by the outside world. Your happiness is not dependent on yourself. It's dependent on other people. And so then what you do is you sign away the rights to control your life to the outside world. And then you're not in control. Life is taking you wherever it wants to take you. You feel powerless. Other people make you feel a particular way. You're a victim to their feelings and their whims. So what do you do? What do you do about this? It's hard, but you start by going to the source of the insecurity and recognize that if your, confid if your confidence in yourself is lacking, the only place it's going to come from is within if you're insecure about your appearance, no amount of reassurance by the outside world is going to make that go away. If you're insecure about your capability, about your worth, about your value, no amount of the outside world is going to be able to teach that to you. So what you've got to do is sit with it, right? So like, look at yourself in the mirror and then like, look at yourself and then be like, okay, where is, where is the ugliness? And you may see it. You may see it right away. You look at yourself in the mirror and you'll be like, oh my God, this guy's hideous. 
And then notice how you feel and sit with that feeling and tolerate it. Tolerate the hunger. Tolerate it. Sit with it. And then something magical will happen. It's going to be a waiting game. It's going to try to feed thoughts into your head. Be careful. Don't give in to those thoughts. Put your focus on something else. So go and find like a candle. And then like look at... The, so what I want you to do is place a mirror and place a candle in front of the mirror. And then look at, the, look at your reflection in the mirror and then look at the candle. And then look at the candle and put your entire attention on the candle. And then notice that as your attention goes onto the candle, the hunger within you, the thoughts of judgment of your own appearance will begin to subside. And then you step back into the arena. You look at your reflection again. And notice all of those thoughts come up. And then turn your attention to the candle. And with each of those moments, the hunger will start to subside. It'll start to melt away because you're not feeding it. And if you do that practice enough, the insecurity will, dis will dissolve with it. All you guys have to do is stop feeding it. Bring it up, face the hunger, and stop feeding it. You can even do it with food. If you have a temptation with food, watch what happens to your desire. Get some kind of food or get a Coke or whatever you kind of struggle with and look at it. Notice your desire come up and then turn your attention to something else. And then look at the thing again. Notice it come up and turn your attention to something else. And eventually learn how to tolerate the bad feelings on the inside. And as you learn how to tolerate them, as you learn how to sit with them, you will start to accept them and then they'll start to dissolve. And the insecurity will dissolve with it. So stop fighting yesterday's battles today because that's what we see a lot of, right? Everyone else made fun of you, so now you've got to show the rest of the world how awesome you are. It's yesterday's battles. It's not today's. And it ends up creating all kinds of these like weird problems in your life because you start to beat, treat people in a way that's kind of bizarre and is like dependent on how you felt some time ago. So stop fighting yesterday's battles today. And the second thing is stop fighting internal battles on the outside. If you have an insecurity, nothing in the outside world is going to take that away. That's a battle that has to be fought in here. So if you want to do that, that's how you deal with insecurity. In terms of meditation practice, I actually encourage you guys to do what I just said. So to actually take a candle and go and sit in front of a mirror and look at yourself in the mirror and see what you think about yourself. And then look at the candle. And then look at the mirror. Let those thoughts come up and tolerate. Sit with the person that you are. Because you're not a bad person. But it's when you refuse to hang out with yourself and you distract yourself with alcohol or video games or whatever that you start to, like, slip away. Be with yourself. See who you are. Because I guarantee you that it's not nearly as bad as you think it is. If you guys need a little bit of help with this kind of stuff, that's what we made our coaching program for, right? Because people want time with Dr. K, but unfortunately, I'm a little bit busy and I can't reach everyone. The good news, I know this sounds crazy, but it turns out that if you look at outcomes, the coaches tend to do as well as I do in terms of actually improving people's lives. I'm not saying that you're going to have an emotional catharsis within the first session. That's probably not going to happen. But people do have emotional catharsis through our coaching program pretty consistently. It's just the coaches work a little bit slower than I do. But at the end of 8, 12, or 16 weeks, we tend to actually help our clients the same amount. So they're basically as good as I am. So if you guys need help with that, that's why we started the coaching program. And we're building additional things for you guys. More stuff like what we're doing. 